Info hazards. An information hazard or info hazard is a risk that arises from the dissemination of information that may cause harm or enable some agent to cause harm. I decided to do something different than an iceberg today. I thought it would be a totally fun and original idea to rank every single info hazard in an objective tier list. Now, before we get started, something that I want to note is that info hazards are not the same thing as cognito hazards. An info hazard is harmful information that can cause danger if known or spread, such as, I don't know, instructions for making nuclear weapons. A cognito hazard, on the other hand, is a type of info hazard that specifically causes psychological harm to those who understand it, like disturbing concepts designed to induce fear or confusion. So basically, while all cognito hazards are info hazards, not all info hazards are cognito hazards. Info hazards involve harmful consequences from the spread of information, whereas cognito hazards specifically cause harm through the act of comprehension. With all that out of the way, let's get into the ranking. The way I will be ranking these info hazards is by how dangerous and actually interesting they are. Also, subscribe. The goal is 20,000 by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate Appreciate it. Spoilers. Yes, spoilers are info hazards. They can cause emotional distress to those who prefer to remain unaware of key plot points in media. Spoilers often reveal crucial details such as character deaths, unexpected twists, or major plot developments. For those who enjoy experiencing stories without prior knowledge of these elements, spoilers can result in disappointment and reduced immersion in the narrative. Spoilers are deep here. They are not remotely interesting at all. They just ruin the mood. They also do not pose physical harm or broader societal risks, so I'm placing them in a lower tier compared to more severe info hazards. We'll get into the cool info hazards later, by the way. The game. The game is a mental challenge where the main rule is to avoid thinking about the game itself. When someone thinks about the game, they immediately lose. This simple rule creates a cognitive challenge, as participants must constantly monitor their thoughts to avoid losing. The game exemplifies the principle of intrusive thoughts, where trying not to think about something makes it more likely to occur. So the game is a prime example of a cognito hazard, as it causes distress when thought about. However, if someone doesn't care about winning or losing, the distress may be minimal, so see here, it's just a little annoying. Placebo and Nocebo Effect The placebo and nocebo effects are phenomena where the body is influenced by thought alone. The placebo effect occurs when someone experiences a positive response to a treatment with no therapeutic value simply because they believe it will work. Conversely, the nocebo effect happens when a person experiences negative side effects or symptoms of illness after receiving a treatment or suggestion. These are beat here. The nocebo effect can lead to significant physical and psychological distress based on belief alone, making it a noteworthy hazard, though it generally doesn't pose as severe of a risk as more dangerous info hazards. The Despair Code Alright, now we're getting into the interesting and obscure info hazards. The despair code is this idea, or series of ideas, that if you think them, you will go into a state of existential dread. It represents a symbolic or literal code, symbol, concept, or image that embodies profound despair and existential dread. Again, the despair code might be represented as a cryptic symbol, phrase, or image. In summary, the despair code is the notion that certain ideas can reliably induce existential dread or even suicidal thoughts in anyone exposed to them. S tier. The despair code is pretty vague, but can also cause severe psychological distress and existential dread, making it a highly dangerous cognito hazard compared to less impactful info hazards. Traumatizing imagery. Traumatizing imagery refers to visual content that causes strong emotional reactions and psychological distress in viewers. This includes graphic depictions of violence, horror scenes, or images that provoke fear, disgust, or revulsion. So for example, watching gore in movies or videos. Additionally, repeated exposure can desensitize individuals, making them less sensitive to violence or disturbing content. 
It's beat here. Traumatizing imagery can cause severe psychological distress and long-term mental health issues, making it a pretty messed up cognito hazard. Earworms Earworms, or involuntary music imagery, are catchy tunes that repeatedly play in a person's mind uncontrollably. These can range from mildly annoying to distressing, disrupting concentration and causing irritation or discomfort. Though considered cognito hazards due to their potential to cause frustration and anxiety, most earworms are relatively harmless. D tier. Earworms are usually not severely distressing or harmful, making them a lower tier cognito hazard compared to more serious ones. Paradoxes. Paradoxes are statements or situations that seem self-contradictory or logically absurd, but may reveal underlying truths about reality. They are considered info hazards because they can disrupt rational thinking and cause mental distress or discomfort. Famous paradoxes like the grandfather paradox, the liar paradox, and Sinos paradoxes illustrate the complexity and vagueness of reality. Paradoxes can either be F tier or S tier, so I'll put them in the middle B tier. It really all depends on the nature of the given paradox and the effect it can have on learners. Memes I don't need to explain what memes are. Some memes like these and these could be considered info hazards, and these are pretty cool, so B tier. Smile JPEG Smile JPEG, also known as Smile Dog, is a famous internet creepypasta originating from a cursed image circulated online. The legend claims that viewing the image, which shows a dog with a human like smile, causes psychological distress, nightmares, and even madness or suicide. While its exact origins are unclear, Smile JPEG has become a staple of internet folklore and creepypasta stories. As a form of cognito hazard, Smile JPEG induces fear and, and psychological discomfort in those who encounter it. A tier. Smile JPEG causes significant psychological distress and fear, making it a notable cognito hazard, though it generally doesn't lead to widespread harm compared to more severe info hazards. Intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts are unwanted, distressing thoughts that can range from mundane worries to disturbing scenarios. They cause significant anxiety, guilt, or distress, especially in individuals with conditions like OCD. As cognito hazards, they harm mental well-being and can potentially lead to harmful actions if acted upon. A tier. Intrusive thoughts can cause severe psychological distress, making them a high-tier cognito hazard. The Egg Theory The Egg Theory from Andy Weir's short story The Egg suggests that every person is reincarnated and lives the lives of all humans who have ever existed or will exist. This idea implies that all individuals are manifestations of the same soul, experiencing different lives to learn and grow spiritually. As an info hazard, the egg theory can cause existential crisis and distress by challenging conventional beliefs about identity, free will, and the afterlife. B tier. The egg theory can induce significant existential distress and challenge deeply held beliefs, making it a notable info hazard, though it generally doesn't cause immediate psychological harm. Nuclear Codes Nuclear codes are encrypted sequences used to authorize the launch of nuclear weapons. Knowing these codes is considered an info hazard because their unauthorized disclosure or acquisition can pose significant risks to individuals and society. The potential for catastrophic harm makes nuclear codes a highly dangerous info hazard, so A tier. No, S tier. Nah, I'll put it in A tier. Yes, nuclear codes pose an extreme risk due to their potential to cause massive harm and global consequences. They are a top tier info hazard, but the chances these would fall on a random person's hands with bad intentions is probably very low. Break your thumb ligament. 
Break your thumb ligament refers to a diagram or technique suggesting that one can break a thumb ligament using only the force of their hand. This concept is considered an info hazard because many people, after seeing it, may be tempted to try it, leading to self-inflicted injury. This is by far the most dog shit info hazard, immediate F tier. Something I didn't mention in my explanation for this entry in the iceberg video was that this diagram is actually an infographic providing instructions on how to perform a tendonitis test. And somehow the image got widely circulated online in early January 2017 when various Twitter users claim to have broken their thumb by following the image's instructions. So yeah, this is just a Mayo Clinic infographic demonstrating how to perform a Finkelstein test for Curvine's tendonitis. It's BS. Wait, still though, don't try it. Just in case, please don't try it. You're a disbeliever to other faiths. The concept of you're a disbeliever to other faiths is a variation of Pascal's wager. This argument posits that by adhering to one religious belief, a person inherently disbelieves in thousands of other religions. If their chosen faith is incorrect, they cannot claim ignorance or immunity from potential afterlife consequences. Therefore, simply knowing about other faiths is considered an info hazard as it challenges one's religious security and introduces existential risk. I was a little conflicted for this one, so I asked a friend where they would put it, and they said B tier, but ultimately I think I'm putting it in A tier. This info hazard can cause significant existential distress and challenge deeply held beliefs, making it a pretty notable hazard. You are now blinking manually, you are now breathing manually. The phrases you are now blinking manually and you are now breathing manually prompt individuals to become consciously aware of typically involuntary bodily functions. By drawing attention to these automatic processes, these statements disrupt their automatic nature, causing discomfort or distraction. D tier. While these cognitive tricks cause temporary discomfort, they do not lead to lasting harm, making them a lower tier cognito hazard. Consciousness. Okay, so the statement, you are conscious, highlights human awareness and self-perception. While essential to identity, contemplating consciousness can evoke existential anxiety and profound questions about reality and the meaning of life, causing feelings of dread or distress. This is B tier. Contemplating consciousness can lead to significant existential distress, making it a notable cognito hazard. You can do anything. The statement, you can do anything, refers to the idea that one can perform any physically possible action. While it may inspire optimism and confidence, it also carries cognitive risks. This concept is an info hazard because, if misinterpreted or embraced by malicious individuals, it can lead to harmful or reckless actions, disregarding personal limitations and ethical considerations. A tier. The belief in unlimited potential can lead to dangerous behavior and ethical disregard, making it a high tier info hazard. Epilepsy F tier. The assertion that epilepsy is a cognito hazard is likely just a joke someone thought off online. If you don't know, epilepsy is a neurological condition characterized by recurrent seizures caused by abnormal brain activity. Certain visual stimuli, like flashing lights, can trigger seizures in individuals with photosensitive epilepsy. F tier, epilepsy is not a cognito hazard, okay? Pascal's Wager Pascal's Wager is a philosophical argument by Blaise Pascal, suggesting that it is rational to believe in God even without evidence, because the potential rewards outweigh the potential costs. The argument can be summarized as follows. Believing in God and God exists means eternal happiness in heaven. Believing in God and God does not exist means no loss. Not believing in God and God exists means eternal damnation. Not believing in God and God does not exist means no gain. While some view it as wrong to believe solely for potential benefits, others see it as a rational basis for faith. So, this is B tier. Pascal's wager can induce some existential anxiety and challenge, you know, deeply held beliefs. I've been saying that for a while now, making it a notable but not the most extreme info hazard. The reason I won't put it in S tier are because of comments like this. 
For anyone in the comments genuinely scared of Pascal's wager, let me reassure you that the argument itself is absurd. Pascal's wager assumes that one god, example Christian, Jew, and Muslim god, must exist, and therefore is absurd. There is a literal infinite possibility of other gods that could be real, so there are infinitely more gods that won't punish you for not believing than gods that will, and vice versa. Therefore, Pascal's wager is absurd to assume true. Roko's Basilisk Roko's Basilisk is a thought experiment and internet meme that originated on the forum Less Wrong in 2010. It posits a hypothetical future artificial superintelligence whose goal is to maximize human happiness. So the concept is that this AI will punish anyone who knew about it but didn't help bring it into existence, potentially subjecting people to simulated suffering. This idea serves as an info hazard by inducing fear. It highlights potential risks of advanced AI and ethical considerations in AI development. This is eight here. Rogos Basilisk induces significant existential anxiety and fear about future AI, making it a high tier info hazard. Though there is Samantha's sanctuary and all that, we'll be getting to that later. Infinity and Nothingness. Infinity and nothingness are philosophical concepts that challenge human understanding. Infinity represents boundlessness and endlessness, while nothingness signifies the absence of existence or substance. Attempting to fully comprehend infinity can lead to paradoxes and cognitive challenges as the human mind struggles with concepts beyond finite experience. Nothingness, explored in nihilism and existentialism, raises questions about existence and can evoke existential dread. To Together, these concepts are considered cognito hazards because attempting to perceive them fully can lead to madness. Beat here. The contemplation of infinity and nothingness can cause profound existential distress and cognitive overload, making them pretty high tier cognito hazards. I'm not gonna lie, it feels kind of wrong putting this below Smile Dog, but there's no going back. The universe is finite. The concept that the universe is finite is pretty self-explanatory. It says that the universe has a limited size as opposed to being infinite or eternal. The universe is finite relates to the fact that if it is indeed finite, the question what is outside everything must be asked, and that just falls right back into the madness of nothingness. Beat here. The idea that the universe is finite can provoke existential dread on the philosophical peeps, so yeah. The world is real, you are not. The statement, the world is real, you are not, says that the external world is real while questioning the individual's existence. This idea challenges basic assumptions about reality and identity, leading to existential distress. It resembles experiences of depersonalization, but implies that they are true and not psychological. So this is beat here. This concept challenges one's sense of reality and identity, making it a high tier cognito hazard. You cannot prove anything. You cannot prove anything reflects extreme skepticism, questioning the possibility of attaining objective certainty or absolute proof. It highlights the limitations of human cognition, leading to existential doubt and uncertainty about reality. This concept raises questions about the reliability of perception and the validity of evidence, causing distress for some individuals. See it here. This concept can cause significant existential distress, but it's also kind of stupid and problematic and tinfoil hatty. Not that I have anything against those things, but yeah, no elaboration needed. Samantha Sanctuary Samantha Sanctuary is a concept opposing Roko's Basilisk, suggesting the creation of a benevolent AI to counteract the potential dangers of a malevolent AI. This thought experiment proposes that a kind AI could prevent the harm envisioned by Roko's Basilisk, ensuring a positive outcome for humanity. Other people interpret it as, like, this benevolent AI will destroy those aiding uh, Roko's Basilisk or those helping in Roko's construction A tier. It is literally our savior from the impending doom that Roko's Basilisk is gonna bring us. And also, while Samantha's Sanctuary offers a hopeful solution, it still involves ethical dilemmas related to AI development. Virus 23 so Virus 23 is sort of like a predecessor to the Despair Code. Virus 23 refers to a thought experiment involving an info virus, a virus that infects information rather than biological organisms. 
This concept suggests that certain ideas or pieces of information can spread and replicate within human consciousness, influencing thoughts, behaviors, and societal dynamics, similarly to how a biological virus infects organisms. Learning about Virus 23 could theoretically infect someone's mind, much like a computer virus causing harm. Also from what I read, Virus 23 can also literally be anywhere, so you can't really protect yourself from it. S tier. Even though Virus 23 is incredibly obscure and there's barely any information on it online, as a cognito hazard, it is a pretty damn cool idea. Tulpas. Tulpas are thought forms originating from Tibetan Buddhist tradition, believed to be sentient beings created through intense mental concentration. In modern internet culture, tulpas are often seen as imaginary friends or just like autonomous beings with their own thoughts and personalities created through practices like tulpa forcing. There is a theory that these tulpas can be possessed by demonic entities and manifest physically, potentially causing harm. B tier. The concept of tulpas can cause psychological distress and fears of demonic possession or harm, making it a significant but not the most severe info hazard. Solar Plexus Clown Gliders Solar Plexus Clown Glider refers to a paranormal belief that reading or hearing the phrase or viewing these corresponding images can allow a demonic entity to infect one's soul, causing harm or death. Solar Plexus Clown Glider is thought to target weak and vulnerable individuals through the Solar Plexus Chakra. This corruptive entity manifests through language and imagery, feeding off human misery and inducing realistic hallucinations and emotional weakening, similar to severe withdrawal symptoms. The idea that simply encountering this phrase or image can lead to such a dire outcome makes Solar Plexus Texas Clown Glider a Cognito Hazard, A tier. Now, I would usually put entries like these in S tier, especially with how dreadful the corresponding image is, but I'm tearing it down literally just because of its name, and putting it in A tier, like it's literally called Solar Plexus Clown Glider. It still is a high tier Cognito Hazard, but yeah. So yeah, that was the ranking. It was pretty fun to rank these info hazards. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and like. Again, I'm trying to get to 20,000 subscribers soon. That would really be a dream come true. Oh yeah, if you disagree with the ranking, also like leave it in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you in the next Iceberg video or whenever I come back.